Hi, welcome to the Victor Emanuel Nature Tours webinar. I am Ben Reynolds, producer and host of the Vent webinar series. In 2019, Vent inaugurated a fabulous new India train tour aboard the impeccable Maharajas Express. Based on the great success of this trip, we have decided to again offer this special departure in 2023. The detailed itinerary for this departure may be found and downloaded in the handout section in the control bar. Please note that the presentation will include an incredible video showcasing the Maharajas Express before we conduct a live question and answer session. So please stay till the end to find out about Vent's exclusive discount offer and send us your questions and comments to learn more about this unique departure. Well, now let's welcome our panelists, Victor Emanuel, CEO, and Barry Lyon, Chief Operating Officer of Victor Emanuel Nature Tours. Welcome, gentlemen. And Raj Singh, who is unable to join us live, but we did meet up with him recently, and he has a short clip that we'll play for you in just a moment. But a little about Raj. He was born in Bharatpur, Rajasthan, he is a distinguished ornithologist, fellow of the Royal Geographic Society, and inveterate world traveler. His first passion in life is wildlife conservation, and his knowledge of natural history is unsurpassed. He also has a fascination with India's history, culture, and cuisine. So now let's turn to a few words from Raj. No, I'm just telling them. <laughs> I need whatever. Okay. Uh, namaste. I would like to welcome you to India on this fabulous train journey. Please come and join us on this great Wen trip where we travel by the, one of the most deluxe trains from Mumbai to Delhi through the princely states of Rajasthan. When I'm saying princely states of Rajasthan, you would see forts, palaces, colorful people. And of course, you are at the edge of the Thar Desert, and there is a very different culture which you come to see about it. So this this gives you an idea of a unique culture, colors, sounds, sights, besides, of course, the birds and animals. And we are going to go to some of the best known national parks in the world for Indian wildlife. Kevladev National Park for the birds, Rantabot Tiger Reserve for the tigers, and of course, other areas as well. Let me remind you one thing. Pandemic in India is now history. We are, we have come to normal life. People are doing their day-to-day -day activities, and um, there's absolutely no reason not to come to India because of any misconceptions. Uh, Everything is safe. I'm here, and of course, we would love to, we would Take great care of you and make you enjoy the trip. Thank you. And now we will turn to opening remarks by Victor Emmanuel. I'm delighted to be with you today to talk about one of my very favorite trips because over the last 40 years, I've led about 400 tours. But my trip on the Maharaja Express a few years ago was the best trip of my life. Ever since I went to India in about 1988, co-leading a tour with Bob Fleming, I fell in love with India. The birds, which they protect, by the way, the wildlife, which they protect, the scenery, the historical monuments, the food, the people, the dance performances, all are amazing. For example, you may see 20 gray langors, a big monkey type animal, on top of a tree calling because they have spotted a tiger or a leopard in the distance. And they are letting the other animals know about their spotting it. And therefore under the tree, there may be as 20 chital, a small deer, worried about their perching tiger and hanging out together under the tree. That's something you may see, and then the tiger may come. Or you may, after lunch at the Maharaja's palace on the patio, you may, you will have the opportunity to ride an elephant in the garden if you want to. India is rich in incredibly rich in so many ways. I have led 10 tours to India. I love them all. 
but the trip on the Maharajas Express was the best. Every day was exciting and fun. Since we've had to release our unsold cabins, or we'll have to release them on September 30th, we're making a special offer unlike we have ever made before. Book a cabin by September 21st and receive a discount of $1,000. India has done a superb job of dealing with COVID. They have an excellent vaccine that they've produced. Life is back to normal. Travel to India is safe. Tourism is booming. This is the perfect time to go to India. I can assure you that this trip will be one of the best and most delightful of your life. One of the reasons this tour is so popular is it provides options for those keen to enjoy the uniquely Indian wildlife or also an option for those who want to indulge in the history and culture of the country. After Barry takes you through the day-by-day -day itinerary, I urge you to continue watching this program, but to watch the 11 minute video on this trip, it is superb. It will give you a great idea what it's like to be on the Majorat Express. And after you watch it, you will want to sign up for this amazing trip. Barry? Uh, thank you, Victor, for your, your comments. Um, you know, listening to Victor talk, it reminds me of it was 2019 when he and I and several of our other tour leaders, Dion Hobcroft, Mikhail Valkenberg, and Max Breckenridge, had the pleasure of leading this trip. And at that point in time, it was my first time in India. And it was just, a, it, it was all that and more. It was a, a, a true feast for the senses, as the saying goes. Uh, it was just an exceptional trip. And uh, as Victor pointed out, uh, our tour, India Birds and Culture on the Maharajas Express, uh, it is a multi-dimensional type of a program. Uh, birds in nature are a big port, part of what we do, the culture, the opportunity to ride on this wonderful train. It all comes together for just really a, uh, just a phenomenal presentation. What we're going to do here, take you through a series of slides that showcase the trip. Uh, we're going to show you the, the route, which uh, we, have, we have maps for, which we will be displaying on several occasions as we work through our presentation. And we will be including a fair amount of uh, narration interpretation as we go along. Uh, and upon conclusion, as Victor said, please stay tuned for uh, a wonderful video. Cover slide again to remind you that this trip that we're talking about here is it will operate uh, in the winter, this coming winter, January 25th through February the 10th. And I am, uh, as I said, I'm going to take you through a day by day uh, presentation of uh, what you can expect to see, what this trip entails. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a map of the whole tour route. As you can see, uh, this trip is late. This trip will take place in western, uh, northwestern uh, India. India, of course, being a very large country, but we will focus on the northwestern side from Mumbai to Delhi. Uh, this train does the Maharajas Express does run back uh, back and forth but we will run it from south to north. So participants upon departing the United States, you will come to Mumbai, formerly Bombay. Uh, perhaps some of our viewers will be more familiar with that name than Mumbai, uh, perhaps not. And what we will do, uh, we will spend a couple of days uh, right in Mumbai. Uh, I will describe some of the activities. We will board the Maharajas Express in Mumbai. And you can see that the, 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 the train the, the railway is demarcated on the map by these train track icons running generally north from Mumbai. We will go through the state of Rajasthan, which is where the so-called princely cities, the famous princely cities uh, of the, the old lands of the formerly what was known as the Rajputana on the edge of the Thar Desert here in western India. And the cities that we are talking about are Udaipur, Jodhpur, and Jaipur. These lands, the Rajputana, basically consisted of, these were, these were for centuries, 
These were the, pow the great power bases of the Indian Maharajas, places where they built tremendous forts, extravagant palaces, incredible tombs. And we will have a chance to see that. As Victor mentioned, uh, when we put this trip together, we think that there's something for everybody in that there will be options all the way through. You will have chances if, 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 if spending your day visiting uh, an, an extraordinary palace is what you'd like to do, uh, we have got that. If your preference is in birding and nature, we can provide that. And on some days we offer both. So as I say, we really think there's something for everyone up here to Jaipur because from there, the train continues southeast to its terminus here at Sawai Madhupur. From here, we then go overland and we go to Ranthambore National Park, the famous Kialadio National Park at Bharatpur. We go to the Taj Mahal, the incomparable Taj Mahal before winding up the trip here in Delhi. Um, all, all the way across, once we leave the train, all the way across, we will be staying in hotels of the beautiful Oberoi line, which is, uh, quite possibly the finest hotel line in India. And so one of the points that we make, uh, in addition to all the sights and sounds, really the, the kaleidoscope of sensations on this trip are that high quality is ensured all the way across, whether you're on the train or whether you're off the train uh, and then doing activities during the day and going back to a beautiful hotel in the evening. So why don't we go ahead and get started here. As we said, uh, this trip starts in Mumbai and uh, it, it does take, given the tremendous distance from the United States, it does take a couple of days to get there. But once we do, uh, and once we're gathered, our first morning out will be a birding excursion to a place called Tane Creek. It looks like Thane Creek, but we but it is pronounced Tane Creek. And basically, Tane Creek is uh, an inlet off the Arabian Sea. Uh, we have it highlighted in an uh, oval-shaped circle here, and it is an inlet off the off the Arabian Sea. It is basically an estuary, and it is a tremendously important birding area. Uh, most particularly. It is a gathering place for flamingos, greater flamingos and lesser flamingos feeding side by side. Uh, they form an incredible spectacle, and we have the pleasure of seeing this from being in a boat that travels around the estuary. So we get close views of these things, but it's about much more than, than just the flamingos. It's filled with shorebirds. We see uh, hawks and land birds and the mangroves around the edge of the estuary. Uh, it really makes for a wonderful, immersive first experience in, in birding in India. This is a representation of what this scene looks like. Right up against the backdrop of the city, you've got thousands of flamingos of both types, greater and lesser flamingos, feeding side by side, up to their belly, you know, fantastic camera shots and so on. Kind of improbable, really, given... Uh, uh, given the size of Mumbai, that you've got this incredible wildlife uh, uh, spectacle right here before us. Day four, which is really our second day in India, we offer some options. We're offering, uh, we, we start the day in the morning with an opportunity to enjoy a city tour of Mumbai or to go birding. And with all of our with all of our with all of our excursions, in addition to being in the company of a very fine group of vent tour leaders, we are also joined by professional licensed guides who work to ensure that you have the best experience you can get. And in Mumbai, uh, these some of these images uh, again are representative of some of the things that participants on this trip will have a chance on this excursion we'll have a chance to see the Bombay High Court, um, the Gateway of India, and the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel. Uh, Mumbai is an incredible complex multi-layered society and so there are just so many things to see and we do make half the, a little more than half of the day uh, enjoying the sights of Mumbai. And one of the things that's nice about this is that 
about this trip that I don't want to forget to mention is that uh, if if it, it's perfect for couples who often have got mi mixed uh, mixed interests in their travel. For example, maybe one is a birder, but the other is not. This is a perfect solution to that because for the other option, those the other option we offer this on this morning is a birding excursion to Sanjay Gandhi National Park on the outskirts of Mumbai. And uh, <clears throat> here again is just a tremendous opportunity to see some really wonderful birds like the gray hornbill, copper smith barbet, rose ring parakeet, uh, just really nothing like a, a nice morning in the field. Uh, right outside this, this huge city, have a chance to enjoy some great birding. We come together uh, thereafter and we will visit the Prince of Wales Museum in the afternoon. The Prince of Wales Museum is one of the more famous landmarks in Mumbai. Uh, it took its name, it took its name, it was given its name um, in honor of the man who would become King Edward V, who in 1905 came to India. At the time, he was still the Prince of Wales, and therefore uh, the, the museum was christened with his name. It's an amazing place showcasing Indian history, art, and natural history. Uh, well worth the experience. Round out the day. On day five, we will actually embark the Maharaja's Express. And this is the moment that many of us have been waiting for. Uh, we come to the train station. We are greeted with considerable fanfare. <laughs> Often they're playing music. They roll out the red carpet. Uh, you know, there are people in full regalia, dancing and singing. Um, it's, it's really quite a welcome. It's almost overwhelming, but it's, it's joyous. It's fun. Once we board the train, we will then be en route to our first stop at Udaipur. And uh, it isn't just about the destination, of course, it's about the experience, it's about the journey. And all the way across, you'll be getting a view of Indian landscapes, uh, people, villages, towns, and so on that we roll through, enriching your experience. And again, the train closes in on Udaipur, our first uh, our first point of deboarding, because once we get to Udaipur, we will have a full, a full day here. And here again, there will be an opportunity to partake of either a city tour or go birding, if that's, if that's your preference. Uh, the big white palace, the city palace of Udaipur, uh, it is spectacular. Uh, it is really sort of the first instance that we will see on this trip of the re revelatory of really the awesome wealth of the Maharajas from centuries ago. Um, just massive palaces, multi-roomed palaces and so on. Uh, we will have a chance to visit the city palace with our guide, but we will also have a chance to take a boat out onto the lake that fronts onto uh, the palace uh, which there is a the Taj Lake Palace right out in the center of this body of water. Uh, there are birds around out here also, but this excursion is really more about just uh, enjoying the sights of Udaipur. Uh, those who prefer uh, birding in nature, uh, we will go to a site, uh, I think it's uh, Menar, about a half an hour outside of Udaipur, uh, where I know the last time we did this, people came back delighted. Uh, there were lots of waterfowl seen, painted storks. Uh, this image on the lower right is representative of what it can be like, just the sky filled with birds, flamingos, geese, and so on. These bar-headed geese, of course, are a beautiful Asian bird that we have a, a, a good chance of seeing on this trip. At the end of the day, everybody comes back to the train. We get back on and we head to our next stop up the line, the princely city of Jodhpur. The distance to Jodhpur is not so great. Um, we are there by the following morning. Here's a little closer up, drilling down on our route. Continue on. Um, one of the things uh, about uh, Jodhpur 
is that uh, we will start our day before we actually go into Jodhpur. We will have time outside for a little bit of birding um, and wildlife viewing. We go to the Bishnoi village of Guda Talab. The Bishnoi is a religious sect, centuries old religious sect. Uh, they're out in the desert, but they are very close to nature. And uh, one of the great memories that we had from the last time that we did this trip in 2019 was our stop here produced this wonderful group of demoiselle cranes. Um, and there's no reason to think that those birds would not be present the next time around because of the site. Uh, there's water and the birds are fed and so on. And so uh, a morning stop at Gouda Talab is just right, just a, a very excellent way to start our day. Other birds that you might see, for example, are the ruddy shell duck. And as you can see, this lady <laughs> in close proximity to the cranes, they're not, they're not fearful. We will arrive in Jodhpur. After lunch, we will go into the city. And uh, the primary attraction at Jodhpur is the big fort, uh, the big palace that sits at the top of the hill, an Acropolis, if you will. Uh, it is a massive structure. Uh, it is beautiful. And here again, with our local, with our licensed guide, our professional guide, we will tour the palace complex before descending down uh, to see the market and head off to dinner. This is an example of one of the great chambers or one of the great palace rooms of the at Jodhpur. Incredible gilded, gilding, uh, the architectural styles. It's really a wonder, uh, truly an architectural and artistic wonder. Uh, incredible opulence, but beautiful. And uh, scenes like this generally have people reaching for their cameras, for sure. Um, back, yes, back on, the, back on the train here from Jodhpur, we will continue north. Making our way to our next stop, the town the city of Beaconer. This is another, uh, Beaconer presents another opportunity to blend our historical and cultural interests with our, with our birding, with our focus on birds and nature. Um, upon, uh, well, in Beaconer, uh, the primary activity will be an opportunity to tour the famous Junagar Fort. And, uh, you know, we do include a lot of forts and fortresses because um, this really speaks to the history of this region. Um, and as I say, one of the one of the nice things about it is that for some people, it's a lot of forts, maybe more than they care for, and that's where a lot of the birding activities will come into as a nice alternative. Right outside of Beaconer, there is a, a vast open area of semi-desert and scrub. Um, where it is a great gathering spot for eagles and vultures and so on. This image, these two images were taken by our, co our colleague, Mikhail Valkenberg. Uh, these, this is a group of steppe eagles, birds that have come down out of the steppe country of Central Asia for the winter and that winter in India in sizable numbers. For example, you know, it's, I think it's kind of remarkable to look at this slide on the right to see six or eight of these impressive eagles all lined up together. Uh, so a morning, we spend a couple of hours out there. Uh, other birds that we will see are griffin vultures, uh, cenarius vultures, Egyptian vultures. Uh, it's quite a thing. After the, the birding, that's when we go back into the city of Beaconer or enter the city for the first time rather, and we will spend the morning, the duration of the morning touring the Junagar Fort we come back to the, t to the train for lunch. And then in the afternoon, we continue on to what's known as the Ganyar Wildlife Sanctuary. And uh, these lands, uh, what is now this wildlife sanctuary were the private grounds, the private reserve of uh, a Ma one of the Maharajas of old. It is a place to see birds and mammals. This is a black buck, uh, one of the great antelope of India, just a really kind of a magnificent animal. Uh, we have good chances to see the black buck. Um, here is a section of the palace complex. 
And we're showing this because uh, this lake in front of you is where we will walk along the edge of, uh, it's quite pretty. Uh, when we were here several years ago, we had a very enjoyable afternoon out here at Gunnier. Slides representative of what's possible here. Birds like the beautiful red wattled lapwing. The nilgai, this is a female nilgai, uh, one of the largest antelope in the world. And then this one happens to be adorned with bank minas. That evening, uh, we, will, we, will not, we will not return to the train until later on, but we will, uh, because we have another activity planned, which is we will be taken out into the desert for really what is, it can be described only as an exceptional opportunity to partake of a, I don't know if you call it a party, but more of a celebration on blankets and pillows in the sand of the Thar Desert, complete with wonderful food and beverage, uh, dancers and, and so on. And uh, really just uh, one, of the, one of the more memorable of many cultural experiences to be enjoyed on this trip. Um, and you, you enter the area, you access the area in a, a traveling aboard a camel drawn cart, which is uh, get a kick out of that too. From Beaconer, we will then, the route will then track Southeast with the city of Jaipur the last of the big princely cities on the itinerary. We will be heading into Jaipur. And uh, if the train is running on time, which uh, it generally is or very close to it, we will get into Jaipur in the mid to late morning and we will spend the rest of the day here. We will disembark or deboard rather. Uh, we will go to the city palace uh, where we will have uh, lunch You'll be treated to a wonderful lunch uh, for those who wish an opportunity to ride an elephant or at least watch these beautiful elephants paraded around. Um, but then we will spend the rest of the afternoon in the city. And uh, once again, we present options. Option one will be a tour of the famous Amr Fort, sometimes known as the Amber Fort. But for the birders, those who are more inclined towards nature and birding, we will offer an excursion to the Nahargar Biological Park, uh, which is a modest sized park on the outskirts of Jaipur, but one that offers some really good birding. This is the Amur Fort from below, a towering, imposing structure. And here you go. This is what this, this is what one of the, uh, the palace rooms looks like on the inside. Incredible adornment, gilding, uh, the tile work, the exquisite tile work, it just goes on and on. Uh, it's really a feast for the senses. Uh, I personally accompanied this excursion the last time, uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. For those who choose to go birding, though, there are other types of jewels that await. Avian jewels, birds like the incredible plum-headed parakeet, the painted Franklin, uh, also known as painted spurfowl, depending on which field guide you might happen to look at. Uh, a group of birds in India are the minivets, beautiful things like this small minivet, the Rufus tree pie, which is a spectacular magpie-like bird. Shrikes, the beautiful bayback shrike and long-tailed shrike, just gorgeous things. And these, is, this is, these are just some of the many birds possible on a trip to Nahargar Biological Park. But at the end of the day, uh, it's back to the train for our final leg of the trip, the train journey that is. We will ride the train to its destination, to its terminus at Sawai Madhupur, where we will get off in the morning. Sawai Madhupur, uh, there's two uh, significant things to say about this destination. First of all, it is the gateway to the famous Ranthambore National Park. And it is also a short distance where we will be staying, uh, where our accommodations will be for the next couple of nights, uh, the next three nights, I believe, at the beautiful Oberoi Ivania Villas Hotel, which, speaking for myself, I think is one of the most 
exceptional hotels that I've ever been in designed. Essentially the rooms are designed um, like uh, under big spreading tents. Like you can see partial big open space floor plans and so on. It's a beautiful place. And uh, the grounds themselves are just filled with birds. Plum headed parakeet is one of the things that you would see there. They have palm civets, a little mammal that lives in the trees that comes out at night. And as I say, it is the gateway to Ronthambore National Park and the reason why we're here. And perhaps no site on this trip will inspire or engender uh, as much awe and delight as the tiger. And Ronthambore gives us our, this is the place where we will look for the tiger. This image was taken on our last trip in 2019. Uh, we were in a vehicle that had come up to the edge, the lip of a moderately high cliff. There was another vehicle who had been there ahead of us. They had arrived and looked down and this is what they saw. So this is the prize of a trip to Ronthambore, uh, the mighty tiger. Uh, really, for those of us that are lovers of birds in nature, it really doesn't get much better than this. And, uh, you know, uh, we, our whole group uh, was delighted by this animal the last time that we were here. Um, you know, Ronthambore is a, one, is a good park to see them. They're never, it's not a guarantee, but we have enough vehicles going in enough directions that uh, our chances are pretty good. But of course, a trip into Ronthambore is about more than just seeking tigers. Uh, it is about birds and seeing the Indian peafowl, the wild Indian peafowl in their native state, along with uh, other birds that we have that we have uh, pictured here, just to just to to be so as to be illustrative of what you will see on this, what you might see on these excursions. Birds like jungle bush quail, black stork beautiful black stork, the oriental honey buzzard, the fish owl, brown fish owl, the shikra, like our sharp shinned or cooper's hawk, a little occipiter. And one of my personal favorites, the crested serpent eagle. Um, that bird in flight, those incredible uh, wings, almost like a, a banner flying there, the white, the big white stripe up the length of those gray barred wings. Beautiful thing. The white neap woodpecker, spectacular woodpecker, the greater kukal, big imposing member of the cuckoo family. From Ronthambore, um, at this point, we will be traveling overland. No more train, but we will be traveling overland as we make our way towards our next uh, major destination of Bharatpur. And Bharatpur, I'm going to drill down on this here. And as you can see, we have got another one of our red ovals there to highlight that area. And that's where Roger was born. That's right. As Victor mentioned, uh, that's where our, our colleague Raj Singh uh, was born. Uh, he has his private home there, his personal home. And one other thing that I do want to point out about Raj uh, is that you know, even outside of this uh, amazing India train trip, uh, Raj and his company have managed or operated our India tours for many years. So he is a dear friend, a trusted colleague, and his he has been he was instrumental in uh, putting this, assisting us with getting this program together. And so to be where he lives uh, and to be his guest really in this area. It's quite special. His ancestor was the Maharaja of Bharatpur. Yep, yep, indeed. And uh, Bharatpur, the town of Bharatpur, where we will stay, is the jumping off point to Keoladio National Park. And this is a particular, this park is famous for its concentrations of birds. Uh, much of the habitat uh, is aquatic. There, there are wetlands of different types from marshland to flooded brush, to feet, wet fields, and so on. And all of it adds up to uh, a really what may quite possibly be the, the single greatest birding experiences of the trip. These Saurus cranes are, um, well, you know, this is, a, you know, 
as like as what the tiger is to the mammals, these are to the birds. You know, it doesn't get much better than seeing these. I think it's the tallest crane in the world. The tallest crane in the world, the Saras crane. So, um, our chances of seeing this amazing bird, this magnificent crane, are high. It will be a priority, of course, but uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg here. Painted storks, the the beautiful black neck stork, a declining species in much of India, uh, but they are still at uh, Kialadio. Uh, that would be high on our list to see this gorgeous thing. Waterfowl like the red crested and common poachers, they're in evidence. Other birds like black bittern and cinnamon bittern, uh, representative of, again of what we might see, the stunning purple heron. God, what a gorgeous bird that is with uh, Eurasian spoonbills behind, feeding behind it. And about it for Chialadio was having years where they didn't have very much water. It was very hard on the wildlife. Mm -hmm. But the Indian government has now built guaranteed water for Chialadio, where they always have water. It's a wonderful development. It is. It's just so critical because, you know, we always sort of held our breath. You know, you be kind of tragic to go there and there not be any water but uh those those days are are behind us now okay uh from Bharatpur, uh we will continue overland our next uh our next stop is the agra area we go to agra site of the incomparable taj mahal here we'll drill down on this map a little bit more um We will start with a visit to the Agra Fort, uh, often called the Red Fort. You can see why. Built out of this uh, remarkable red, I believe it's sandstone. Um, and you know, as with the the as with uh, the forts from the princely cities, um, these they, they were built to protect their lands that were under the control of the royal the royal families centuries ago. Today they are tourist attractions that hold sort of endless wonder because of the size, the architectural achievement, the variety, and so on. Uh, after, and this is something that we will all do together. We will go to our hotel, another of the Oberoi hotels. Uh, we will have lunch in Agra. And in the afternoon is when we will make our first visit to the Taj Mahal. And let me see where I am. Okay, this is the, this again, here again is the Agra Fort. And the son of the man who had the Taj Mahal built after he died, and his son became the Maharaja. He was overthrown and put into the Red Fort, where he could look at the Taj Mahal from his room. We'll see all this when we throw the Red mm -hmm. Fort. But he was a prisoner in the Red Fort. So the Taj Mahal... Um, Famous to one and all in movies, uh, posters, postcards, you name it. I think everybody recognizes the Taj Mahal when they see it. However, it doesn't really prepare you for the immensity and the grandiosity of this amazing wonder when you see it in person. When you see it from afar and then walk steadily closer and walk right up to the base of it. In the back is the, Yamu I think the Yamuna River, which... Uh, actually has got, uh, it can be quite productive for birding. I will get to that in just a moment. But we will spend uh, in a, a full afternoon at the Taj Mahal and we'll stay till near sundown. The Yamuna River, as I said, runs directly in back. Here are uh, some photos of some of the birds that one might see. The great black-headed gull, also known as Palace's gull, brown-headed gull river turn and uh, quite possibly the really the, the real prize of this area is the beautiful river lapwing uh, depending on how much water and mud is exposed uh, we have good chances to see this bird i know we saw it the last time really a beautiful uh, special little bird intriguing little guy the taj mahal being what it is is worth a second visit and we will do so the next morning. So whereas we got to visit the Taj late in the day and at sundown, 
you will also get to see it the next morning. And uh, one of the other interesting aspects of a trip to the Taj Mahal are, is a chance to see the macaques, the primates that, uh, the native primates that live in the area that occupy the grounds. And uh, we will have a chance to see the macaques. From Agra, uh, we will travel, continue overland a bit northwest up to Delhi, which is going to be our final stage of the trip. Here we are again, getting a little closer view of it. So as you can see, we are, we are quite far north in India at this point. And uh, we will have some time to see the city and outlying areas. Uh, one of the things that we will do is visit the Okla Bird Sanctuary, which is basically a big wetland on an outfall, a river outfall, right in Delhi. And it is really an exceptional birding area. There's just so many waterfowl, uh, other birds around. Uh, these gargany and bical teal are representative of what we might see. White-throated kingfisher, a widespread but beautiful bird. Bar-headed geese, birds that winter here in the subcontinent after having flown down from much farther north. And what is known about the bar-headed goose is that uh, <clears throat> they are capable of flying directly over the Himalaya mountain chain in order to reach their wintering grounds most directly. So we will have started the morning with a birding option for everybody. And then in the afternoon, we will see a bit of Delhi. Uh, ex the, the sites we visit uh, may vary, but here's just a few images to show you what is possible. The, uh, the offices and residences of the Indian president are here. Um, the Rashtrapati Bhavan, uh, this is the inside basically of the building. It's more exquisite architecture really. Um, and of course, we will eventually make our way to Umayyam's tomb, uh, which I believe he was the father of the, of the man who built the Taj Mahal. And it's, so uh, we will visit the tomb. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it's just to see each, each of these things is different. Each of them is unique. And to see them in different settings, it just adds to the trip. But one thing that I do want to say about Delhi uh, because there may be some questions or even concerns expressed later in our question and answer session, which is that when VENT operates its tours to India, we tend to do so in the first couple of months of the year. There are reasons for that. One, that it is much cooler in India then than it is as the year unfolds, as you get into April, May, June, and so on. And secondly, of course, we are asked about uh, people from time to time will express their concerns about being in these places that are known to have high levels of air pollution. Um, and it is true, Delhi, as is well understood, Delhi does have severe air pollution issues. However, um, we time these trips when air quality is better than it is at other times of the year. When we were there in 2019, uh, frankly, it was fine, actually. Um, there were no sp special oxygen uh, diffusing type masks or machines that people were wearing. Um, there were no big fires around the city that were choking the air over the city with smoke from the fields and so on. It was actually uh, quite easy, uh, quite workable. And I just, as I say, I wanted to bring these points up in case we have some of our viewers may be wondering about this. Well, stay tuned for the video. I've always been fascinated by the country's rich culture and diversity. Mysterious, extravagant, sophisticated, and eclectic. So this winter, I decide to go on a date with the incredible India that I love and book a tour from Delhi to Mumbai on the majestic luxury train, the Maharaja's Express.
I am escorted to my spacious suite in true Maharaja style. The spacious cars have been named after different precious gems, and each coach has a personal valet to attend to its guests. Complete with contemporary amenities and impeccable service, surely a cut above five-star luxury. Once the capital of Mughal India, Agra is known for its monument of love, the Taj Mahal. Built at the banks of the Yamuna by Emperor Shah Jahan for his beloved wife, Arjuman Banu Begum, better known to the world as Mumtaz Mahal. Nothing could have prepared me for a glimpse of the Taj under the early morning winter sun. In this entire setting, this delectable fair, glass of champagne, beautiful strains of the sitar in the background, and to top it off, this glistening white marble tomb in the background. I'm absolutely stunned. Restless and impatient to get to our next destination, I decide to explore the glorious train. Each opulent deluxe car consists of four twin or double bed cabins with attached baths. The junior suite cars, on the other hand, consist of three spacious twin or double bed cabins and a cozy sitting area. Each suite car consists of two sprawling suites with separate living and bedroom areas. Guests staying in the suites even enjoy the extra luxury of a well-stocked mini bar and an elegant bathtub. The presidential suite is exceptionally grand with its two bedrooms, a large living room and a cozy bathtub. The ceiling is decorated with a striking starlight which adds a gorgeous twinkle to the magnificent suite's allure. The train's heart is the Raja Club, a tastefully appointed lounge, the perfect place to spend an idyllic evening. It also houses a fascinating boutique of Indian artifacts and crafts for the discerning shopper. The train finds its way to tiger territory, Ranthambore. We get a chance to come face to face with India's pride, the magnificent tiger. We arrive at the pink city, Jaipur. To a cheerful and exuberant welcome. We are transported to the Jaipur city palace for an exclusive evening in the most regal setting. A sneak peek into the private chambers of the Jaipur royal family. For the guests of the Maharaja's Express, a trip to Jaipur would be incomplete without experiencing a game of elephant polo at the Jaipur city palace. The Maharaja's Express offers us an exclusive visit to the magnificent city palace of Jaipur. I've been invited here not because I have royal blood, but 
because I am traveling on the Maharaja's Express. About 330 kilometers northwest of Jaipur lies Bikanir Camel Country. This evening I find myself on a desert safari, deep in these magical sand dunes. I can imagine in the days of yore what it must have been like when actual camel caravans passed through this area. The music, the dance, the kebabs, and above all these sundowner cocktails. Mmm. This promises to be an evening to remember. As I watch the sun set over the magnificent dunes, I mull over a bygone era and prepare myself to move on to my next desert frontier. The train traverses through the rugged terrain to reach Jodhpur. A city of palaces and forts set against the stark landscape of the Thar Desert. The day ends with a sumptuous meal at the Hanwant Mahal. Overlooking the imposing Mehrangar Fort, and the majestic Umed Bhavan Palace. I return to the luxury of the Maharaja's Express filled with the flavors of India. I revisit my adventures at the Safari Bar, sipping on a refreshing glass of wine as I flip through one of the many enlightening coffee table books that evoke the colorful spirit of a regal Rajputana. The Maharaja's Express offers two fantastic dining choices. The beautiful peacock-themed Mayur Mahal with its hand-blown glass ceiling. Or a meal at the enchanting Rang Mahal with its colorful hand-painted fresco ceiling. The meals are superbly complemented by an excellent selection of fine wine. The lavish menus are a mix of traditional Indian and continental dishes to suit a variety of palates. I choose the beautiful Rang Mahal as my dining option for today. Mm. And the chef has promised me mouth-watering fare. I cannot wait. My mouth is already watering. Chef was absolutely right. This is truly mouth-watering. Mm. We arrive at the city of lakes, Odepo. the Venice of the East. Ruled for centuries by the descendants of the valiant Maharana Pratap, Udaipur truly epitomizes Rajputana valor. The historical excursion ends with a memorable lunch fit for kings at the city palace's Satkar Hall. After another wonderful meal, it is time too soon to move on once again. This is 
has truly been a royal adventure that I will keep with me for a lifetime. After all, this is the first and only time that I have been treated like a Maharaja. We thank you everybody for uh, staying with us through the video. Uh, one thing I will I want to point out is that you know you could see on the video that they started their route from Delhi back to Mumbai. We will go the opposite direction, but it's a unimportant detail, really. Um, anyway, looking ahead to our trip here, um, again we have the dates. Uh, India Birds and Culture on the Maharaja's Express, January 25th through February the 10th, 2023. Uh, this trip will be led by an all-star cast of event tour leaders, really, Dion Hobcroft, Mikhail Valkenberg, Max Breckenridge, Brian Gibbons, and of course, Raj Singh, who uh, you were introduced to at the outset. Uh, the price for this trip, cabin start at 18895 Right. Um, we are offering a, a very special opportunity right now, a discount opportunity, uh, $1,000 per person off the published fee for registrations we received before September the 30th. Uh, we, will be, uh, we will begin releasing some space at whatever unsold space we might have at that point, we will begin releasing. But for now, this is a, an outstanding deal, a heck of a deal really, that we are making available. Uh, should you have any further questions or uh, be interested or would like to register, we ask that you contact uh, one of our operations uh, managers, Greg Lopez or Patrick Swaggerty. Either of them can be reached by email, as you can see here, Greg at Ventbird or Patrick at Ventbird.com. And those are the phone numbers to the vent office and can reach us that way as well. And let me mention about that wonderful video. I thought it was absolutely superb. It focuses on the palaces and doesn't really talk much about the wildlife. The talk that Barry gave, which I thought was excellent, mentions a lot of the other birding and wildlife opportunities. In the video, it mainly talks about the tiger. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of other animals and wonderful birds, and I'm so impressed with the conservation activities in India particularly providing water for Kiyoladio with wonderful water birds and protecting the animals and the birds. And so there's that aspect of the trip as well as the palaces. All right. Yeah, exactly, Victor. And um, now uh, what we also uh, have done with this trip is because despite the fact that we, we do offer, we are pleased with our natural birding and natural history offerings, we realize that for many people, a trip to India, it's a long destination. It may be a, a, a one, a, a distant destination from home, I meant to say. Uh, and, you know, for, for many people, a trip to India will be a once in a lifetime thing. And so we have, we are, we have developed some pre-trip and post-trip uh, option options for people who want to extend their time in India. Uh, the first trip here to, to tell you about is our pre-trip to Kana National Park. This is one that will be led by Dion Hobcroft and Brian Gibbons. It will operate just prior to the start of the train trip, January 20th through 26th. Uh, as you can see, the price is $35.95 per person in double occupancy. Uh, this, is, this area is also a very good area for seeing tigers. And so... If you are, if, you know, should we uh, not see a tiger on our, on our trip, although we're going to give it heck doing so, uh, this gives you uh, a bit more insurance, uh, increased chances to see tiger. And we stay there in a lodge that Rod Singh and his uh, company built in Kana, a very nice lodge. For those who want to stay a little longer, on the other end, we have the Kaziranga National Park Extension. And this area is located in northeast India, and it, it visits some of the most re wildest remaining corners of the country where you will have a chance to see megafauna such as uh, Indian elephants, wild Indian elephants, the greater Indian one-horned rhinoceros, and spectacular birds like the greater Ajitan, a type of stork. They actually take you out on a tame elephant 
to ride out into the field where the uh, where the uh, uh, Indian rhinos are, and so you get very close to the rhinos where you're mm -hmm. sitting on top of an elephant. It's a very wonderful, and it's a huge park over a thousand acres that the British set up, and the Indians have done a great job of maintaining and of protecting the rhinos. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you're riding on an elephant, you might see as many as 20 different uh, Indian one-horned rhinos. This trip and this trip will be led by Max Breckenridge and um, one of our top local leaders whom we work with in India. So um, we certainly hope that you will consider joining us this coming winter, but if that is just too soon or if that's not going to work for you, we are also offering uh, this series of trips again in the winter of 2024, um, in which case we would certainly love to see you then as well. Uh, here are the and, dates. And the discount would not apply to these trips. Mm -hmm. And given the way prices are, they might change by 24 as prices in India increase. That's right. Uh, so the main, the main uh, India train trip will operate January 31st through February the 16th. Again, the Kanha pre-trip for Kaziranga afterward. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. It was a pleasure getting a chance to visit with you. And if anyone has questions, uh, please feel free to send them in the chat or the Q&A in your control panel. Uh, I'll go ahead and start reading out. We have a few here. Bet wonders how many cars on the train. Do you have certain cars reserved? And can you be guaranteed twin beds if you want? Yes, we have certain cars reserved. And yes, you can be guaranteed twin beds. And uh, I don't know how many cars. I would guess we have about 10 cars reserved. Yeah, I remember. For, yes, exactly. It, it, partly it may depend on how many cars the Indian National Railway puts onto it. But I remember distinctly from the previous trip that uh, it had a very private feel to it. We were it, it, The cars that were reserved for our group were all linked up uh, and were kept together. And here, I have a slide here I'll read out uh, to everyone. It's a configuration of the train with facilities. There's five deluxe cars, six junior suite cars, two suite cars, one presidential suite car, one bar and one lounge, two restaurants, one kitchen car, one staff coach, one executive managers and tour managers coach, and two generator coaches. And it holds a total of 88 passengers. Uh, Lisa asked, how many are on the tour? How many can the tour hold? I think we've limited the tour to 50. Uh, it's 40. Less, I think it's less than that. Can I read the, the, the itinerary here? Just yeah, right here. Yes, it's 40. I, I, 40. Think it's, I think so, um, 40. 40 people. Okay, 40. Um, which is why, if you notice, uh, when we were going through our slides there, uh, why we might have had so many tour leaders, the answer is because we want to be able to ensure a good participant to leader ratio. And so, um, but I'm going to give you a specific answer to that confirmation of that. And um, one moment. Yes, correct. 40 people is the limit. And then for the pre and post, it's 15. Uh, Bet wonders uh, about overland travel. Uh, how is that done? Is that done in buses? Yes. Okay. And Gordon wonders which world checklist does Bet use? We're using uh, we're using eBird Clements for everything we do. Okay. Um, and then Lisa asked uh, a similar question: What types of cars, and are there suites? Um, and just to give an example, a deluxe cabin will hold 12 twins, 8 doubles, and that's a total of uh, 20 suites that holds 40 people. A, a deluxe uh, car, not cabin, the deluxe car of the train? Yeah. No. Right. And the junior has 12 twins, 6 doubles, and a suite has 4 doubles, and the presidential suite has its own one cabin. 
Robert says Mary Lou, and he did the 2019 tour, and it says it's as spectacular as described. So thanks for that, Robert. Uh, Anne says, it looks like a wonderful trip. What options do you have for single travelers? Well, they can have their own room, and there will be an extra charge for that. I don't know if I could, we could let you know if you email us an extra charge for having a private room, but you can have a private room. Somebody's raising their hand. Well, it looks like that wraps up our questions for now. I want to thank everybody for attending today's presentation. Uh, if you do have questions, please reach out to me, Ben at vetbird.com, or Greg at vetbird.com, or Patrick at vetbird.com if you would like to secure your reservations in the near future. So thanks, everybody, for joining today's presentation.